Hello and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot Warped with me, Matthew Caddy, aka Puggy. So today we will um, ex um, do most of these stages in the third warp room, and on the next episode we will actually face Doctor Entropy. So yeah. So I am going to go to next the second Arabian level. Level? Sorry. Um, high time. And this one also has the first uh, colored gem we will get in game. So yeah. Uh, and this one is a lot harder than Hang'em High because it requires us to do a certain amount of platforming. In addition, we will see various um, Cortex minions throwing fire at us. Seriously. And we will not get a weapon that can deal with them until a bit later. So we want to be careful with these guys. Yes, yeah, seriously. So let's go over here and spin the grits. And yes, and this, as I say, introduces some uh, very, very uh, perilous platforming and putting some of the um, Cortex minions in some rather annoying positions. You saw one there on his magic carpet flying about there, and that is very annoying indeed, seriously. Because uh, he was right next to a bounce box. And um, with that said, yeah, I don't like those. I don't like that placement at all. Seriously. The, um, unlike with Hang 'em High, most of the um, um, these sections where we have to hang from the ceiling are in 2D, so yeah. And so, um, that is a given, I guess. So let's place Coco over there, very nice. And then spin and drop down, and you get the idea. Yes, we can. Crystal is right over there, so it's needed. Not far from the beginning, actually, of the stage, but firstly, I am going to the bonus stage. If only to get a, another continue point, because although I did hear Jake one earlier, to be fair. Now, this one is going to test our slide jumping skills, as well as our double jumping skills. So, yeah. Um, you will see there is um, these blocks, and the only way to get the uh, blocks in between the metal crates is to actually do a double jump. Is it me, or is Coco's... Um, 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 body slam, more akin to um, a ground pound from the Mario games. Seriously, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, thank goodness this um, gap is big enough for me to get over with Coco. Although, having said that, um, yeah, apparently I'm not very good at jumping off. Well, can you blame me? When I recorded this, I was very, very stressed. Uh, so maybe not a good idea to play a crash game. Well, never mind. It's too late now. So let's go back to here. And indeed, let's get the crystal. Now here's an example of one of these annoying uh, platforming segments because we have the magic carpets floating over a um, bottomless pit. And we're going to see many, many more of these throughout the stage. Seriously. It was bad enough that I actually had to do a pause break here. So, let's continue. And indeed, um, this is our first death route. Yep, we are going to go on our first death route. I even unlocked a, um, dare I say, um, um, achievement for doing so. Seriously. Anyway, that being said, what will happen in this one is that we have to firstly jump over the um, Cortex minions throwing um, these flame traps, so yeah, and so bounce up here, and we have to be careful here because I don't want to drop down. Again, um, if you die within a death loop, likewise with Crash 2, um, you do not have to worry about um, the platform going away. It is only if you die outside of a death route that it's a problem, really. So yeah, you can do it as many times as you wish, as long as you have the lives, and um, that's about it, really. So yeah, 
Now this bit's annoying because we have a magic carpet there. And um, yeah. Let's jump over there. And be careful. I may want to jump back because um, I don't think I'm um, able to do a leap of faith. And that's it. Yeah, we got our first colored gem, the purple gem. Hell yes. Yes, I do love getting the colored gems in the Crash games. Certainly Crash 2 and 3, as I say. That one in the, in the um, Lost City in Crash 1 can go b die in a fire. Although I don't know if an actual um, gem would actually burn there, but never mind. So, um, yeah, apparently I attempted... Uh, well, I'm going to attempt Road Crash. So, you pesky little rats aren't going to back off, eh? Just you continue to gather crystals and see what I do. So, Road Crash. This one can be very annoying for me because of um, one major thing, and that is the police cars. Oh yes, the police cars. Um, because um, you saw in um, Hog Ride, and also the, also I guess also the things, um, yeah, the police cars can be very annoying in this one because of the um, thing. The other thing is the giant chasms. Seriously, there are more chasms in this one, and they are denoted by those um, uh, emergency barricades. Again, there are even sections of the road where there are barricades where you don't slow down, so yeah. Um, I don't know if I get the crystal in this one, to be honest, because um, I don't know if I recorded all of the footage for this stage. That's what I'm going with here. So if I do get the crystal, fine. This one, this stage is a lot longer than, um, um, there is, there is, um, um, Hog Ride, there I go, I almost said Hog Wild, no, oh, um, that's in Crash 1, and, yeah, this is a lot longer. This section here really trips me up because I go from a wheelie, um, boost to a thing, and I land right near a Cortex Minion in his hot rod. Seriously, get off the road, you idiot. Get off the road. Again, using the boost, uh, not the boost pads, but the certainly the jump pads, the ones that will get you over various obstacles, are good. So, yeah, unfortunately, the soonest I get a, a, a boost there, the sooner I slow down because of the turns. And there are multiple pits, you get the, the gist of this problem. And one of them just overtook me. Seriously, these guys are annoying. Sorry, I'm losing my temper here, but yeah. Those races are damn well annoying in um, MC Trilogy, seriously. I could have gone for the uh, thing, but I'm, I'm actually trying here to get the crystal. Seriously. It's not hog, um, hog, um, hog, no, I can't even speak now, roadhog, uh, that's the annoying one, oh no, it's this one. You can actually get a bit of a boost at the beginning of the stage by, um, holding down the R2 button to actually increase your speed, or indeed the X button, that still works, like in the original version of Crash 3, um, so yeah, um, to get a bit of a boost with Crash. It's not always recommended, but I usually like to do that. So yeah, I am not sure if I'm going for the crystal or not here, but there you go. So yeah, I'm in fourth place and etc, etc. Again, the turns are the most annoying thing for me in this stage, seriously. I do not like going around turns in um, Road Crash. The other thing of note, while I'm doing a thing, I am trying to desperately avoid bumping into the Cortex minions in their hot rods because of that. It isn't always easy, but I, that is the way I like to do it with this race, um, so as to keep the boost up with the thing. And yes, I do like boosting over the um, um, things. Sometimes um, you can't always do that if you're going for the gem in this stage, but... 
I certainly do, and sometimes you can easily pit past them if you are able to, and um, I almost got in first place, but as I say, um, these guys are like sumos from the back, yeah, seriously, that's what I like to think of him as, and no, I'm desperately also trying to avoid the pits, because what happens when you fall down a pit? Well, have you ever seen a Roadrunner cartoon? Well, that's basically what happens to Crash, the same thing as Wile E. Coyote. Thankfully, I did actually get the crystal in this stage, which is good. Uh, because I do not want to, to do it too often. I still have to get the gem and the relic. I'll, get, I'll go over the time trials a little later on, but for now, yeah, I think I will go now to the third and final medieval stage um, double header. And this one's a favourite of mine. Yes, because this one introduces the giants. Oh yes, there are two-headed giants, as the level's name suggests. Um, and they can only be defeated in a certain way. And that is by doing a double jump and then jumping and then jumping on their heads because or if you were able to jump from the wall, a normal jump may work, so yeah. Um, I've always used a double jump on the um, things. So yeah. If anything I can say about the uh, medieval levels is this. It is very easy to get the box gems in these stages because they're the, well, the first stage in the game I did was the medieval level, even though you can do them in any order. So yeah. So let's go up to this guy and double jump, and yeah. You can also bounce on his stomach to get, um, I believe, some more Wumba food. You don't get anything else from them, though. But yeah. And you go away tonight. And boy, getting that move was a chore, man. Absolute chore. Surprisingly, I didn't lose my Aku Aku mask there. Seriously, I thought I would have done standing so close to a uh, TNT box. I'm guessing their area of effect isn't as big as in the uh, original trilogy on the PS1. Maybe um, Vicarious Visions decided to um, lay the thing. Again, I did lose my Aku Aku mask there. So, oh, that was too close there. That was way too close to that uh, thing. Another thing of note about this stage is that the further you go into this stage, the more it will start raining. Um, you'll see thunder and lightning coming down, of course, but yeah, the more it starts raining, the worse it gets, of course. It does not affect uh, Crash's momentum in this stage, which um, is somewhat nice, I guess, um, especially since... Um, of course, ice levels in Crash 2 did affect his momentum um, and made it very hard to control again, so yeah. But um, um, it did a nice little aesthetic at least. That was in the original version of Crash 3, to be fair. So let's get away from that box and watch it explode. Then uh, go back here and um, get the thing. Well, if anything, I can get a lot of lives on Crash 3. There is, and there's another wizard. Seemingly their homing blasts do seem to um, move a lot quicker in this stage. Again, this may have been the case in G-Wiz, I'm not sure, but uh, certainly there it did seem to move in a lot quicker. Those stupid frogs can go on and get kissed by a princess, in my opinion, because um, I don't think they want to kiss a bandicoot. So, now to the bonus stage. And yes, the, um, the death where Crash and indeed Coco get smashed against the screen is still in NZ Trilogy. It's probably one of my favorite deaths in the game. So yeah, it is. That is probably more expressive than in uh, the original version. And, to be fair, the deaths in uh, Crash 2 and 3 were more expressive anyway. So yeah. Um, this is going to be tough because now we have some more invisible blocks and to the right of where the TNT boxes were is an exclamation box. So we want to um, make those blocks appear without setting off the TNT boxes, which is not going to be easy. You will probably need to do a, um, 
either a sliding double jump or a crouching double jump. Keep in mind that when you crouch down with uh, Crash or Coco in uh, both games, um, they will gain a bit of height, and that will help get over certain obstacles such as these. So yeah, I probably don't want to. Uh, well, that's not going to work. So yes, I did a sliding jump there. I think I should do a crouching double jump, uh, just in case, to get over those boxes. Not easy, but it needs to be done if I am going to get the box gem for this stage. So, yeah. And, um. Yeah, I don't know why I missed them in the beginning, but never mind. Let's jump over. I can't help but set them off. Okay, well. I can either do it later or do it now. I can do it. I don't know if Crash's double jump will reach the very top one. But it's worth a try. Nope, it won't. So, yeah, this is annoying. This is very, very annoying indeed. I, no, I'm not giving up. No, I'm not. I like Crash too much to not give up. Or to give up. Sorry, I don't know. My context was right there. But never mind. Let's continue. The so, boing. There we go. That, and now, uh, yeah, this one's fine, but there are the dreaded TNT boxes to the right. So, indeed, now I want to do a crouching double jump closer to the uh, TNT box. Yes, that works. Because um, TNT boxes will not go off unless you stand on them or um, spin near them, of course. So, now I can get the boxes fairly easily without too much trouble, and then I can destroy the TNT boxes. I'm going to do it the safe way. Okay, that didn't set them off. Normally it does, I don't know why that didn't work, but never mind, let's continue. So yeah, and oh boy, this is going to be tough. So yeah, double jump, definitely. There we go, and I'm going to do the safe way. Set it off there, and boom, we are done. Literally. So, um... There we go! So now I have how many left? Let's see, about 20, not exactly 20 boxes to get. So yeah. So let's go past Mr. Um, um, Wump there. This is Mario. Um, and yeah. Even though the, um, all the stages act as checkpoints now, um, certainly in Crash 3, they're kind of somewhat redundant, not completely redundant in Crash 2 and 3. Um, not so in Crash 1 because of how they function, but yeah. We have another wizard over here. Again, their blasts will evaporate um, over, I guess, gaps. I mean, their magics are magic? Yeah, magic is... Um... Do you dare kiss me, John Bob? You don't go. No, I'm thinking of that, um, um, that French frog who was voiced by John Cleese in um, The Swan Princess. And seriously, I loved that film as a kid, even though it did borrow heavily from Disney. Anyway, that being said, let's continue through here. And um, you get out of the way there, Merlin. Go back to Kingdom Hearts where you're more needed. And oh boy. Shame that frog didn't take down the uh, giant, but never mind. And then just detonate the nitros, and we're done. Yep! There we go. So on the next episode, we will fight Dr. Entropy. So until then, I will see you later. Goodbye!